So in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the uncertainty in a calculated value. Again, the easiest thing to do is to show you one example, and this is it. So the question says, a student carries out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity C of a solid. Relationship used to calculate C is, and you probably know this one from National Fire Physics, C is equal to E divided by M delta T. Only thing is it's rearranged, obviously. Now the energy supplied E is 5,000 plus or minus sorry, plus or minus 50 joules. Mass of the solid M is 0 0.50 plus or minus 0 0.01 kilograms. And change in temperature delta T is 10.0 plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. Now this is a question from, in fact is based on a question from the 2018 paper. I've changed the numbers just to make things a little bit easier. And the question went on to ask, Calculate the percentage uncertainty in the calculated value of C. Now, with some questions, we might actually be asked to calculate the value of C. So, of course, what we would do is just to use those values. 5,000 for E, 0 0.50 for M, and 10.0 for delta T. Those are the actual, probably the mean values possibly, or the actual measurements. The plus or minus, or the numbers after the plus or minus, those of course are uncertainties and whether they're reading uncertainties or random uncertainties we don't know. Now how we actually answer this question is we work out the percentage uncertainty in each of the values energy, mass and change in temperature and whichever the one of those is largest we take that as the uncertainty in C. So what I'll do then is I'll work out the uncertainty, percentage uncertainty In E. So I'll do that first, then I'll work at percentage uncertainty in M is next, and then I'll work at the percentage uncertainty in delta T. Now I have actually covered this in a different video. To work at the percentage uncertainty, what you do is you take the absolute uncertainty that is in the case of energy that is 50 joules and we divide it by the actual measurement which is 5000 and then we multiply by 100 so for energy that would be 50 divided by 5000 times 100 for mass that would be 0 0.01 divided by the actual measurement of 0 0.50 then multiply by 100 and last but not least for change in temperature we do 0 0.5 which is the uncertainty divided by the measurement of 10.0, then multiply by 100. So we'll calculate that, switch on the calculator. So for energy we have got, I'll work it in brackets, 50 divided by 5000 times 100 gives us 1. So that's 1%, which is the uncertainty in energy. For mass, again we'll use the brackets, 0 0.01 divided by... 0 0.50 times 100 gives us 2%. And finally, for change in temperature, we have got in brackets, well, I've already done brackets, 0 0.5 divided by the measurement of 10.0 times 100 gives us 5%. So basically, the larger of these values, and that is of course the uncertainty in temperature, we take the uncertainty in C, specific heat capacity, as the larger of the percentages. Because obviously this is going to contribute more of an uncertainty to the value of C. Because C, of course, from that you can see this from the equation, that C, the value of C, depends on both energy, mass and change in temperature. So of course change in temperature, since that uncertainty is plus or minus 5%, that would contribute a greater uncertainty. In advanced higher physics, we actually combine them using an equation, but in higher physics, we just take the largest value, sometimes known as the dominant uncertainty. So I would say percentage uncertainty in C is equal to, so it's this, we'll say plus or minus 5%. Now, you might get some questions, so look out for those where you might actually be using, as I said before, this equation to find the value of C. 
And knowing that the uncertainty in C is 5%, we might actually have to work at the absolute uncertainty in C. So in that case, we would actually work at the value of C, and then we would work at 5% of that value. That's maybe something that I'll cover in another video. Last thing I'll do though, is I'll show you some past paper questions, which you might like to try. And of course, these are on the same subject. So the three questions I've lined up are from the 2017 paper, that's paper number two, the written paper, question 2b. From the 2019 paper, paper one, that's multiple choice, and it's question 22. And finally from, this is bang up to date, 2023, paper two, question 13a. So there you go. I'm sure this has been helpful for you. Give those questions a go. And any comments, any questions, remember just to write them in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We'll see you later. Bye for now.